Greetings, the Astro 30 here, yet again looking at this NAD uh, 7225 power envelope, again whatever that means, stereo receiver amplifier. Now, to recap the previous video which will be linked in the description to this, I replaced the output stage transistors here because the PMP transistor was short emitter to collector. Uh, and then found that the VBE multiplier or bias spreader or bias servo transistor has a minus 15 volt reading with respect to ground across all three of its pins, um, which is not correct. So we should be really looking more about minus one odd volt on the emitter and plus one volt on the collector and around about one volt I think it is on the base, somewhere around there. Uh, whatever the value should be that matches the other channel. So around about the one volt mark plus minus. So apart from that voltage being incorrect, I've gone off camera and I've replaced the electrolytics in this power amplifier stage. There's only five of them. Um, and that made no difference. And someone mentioned in the comments at the last video that this capacitor here looks like it's bulging. Well, it's not. If you push on it, I can actually touch the top of the capacitor's cam. It's not bulging. It's just this plastic disc thing that's inside the capacitor as insulation has over time uh, expanded and then forced its way upwards. But it's right next to the heat sink, which is a source of heat, so that stands to reason. The other one isn't doing that, is not suffering the same effects. However, the issue I have found, which is a new one, and would explain the, the distortion on the output, is this new MJ2955 transistor that I put in is open between the base and the emitter. Well, that's not going to help, but it certainly does explain why the negative going peak of the waveform was all jagged and, and straight. Uh, that's because that transistor actually isn't doing anything. And as that transistor is, is responsible for the negative going cycle of the waveform, well, that's why it's distorted. So this brand new transistor is no good. Now the only reason I found this out is because I wasn't getting anywhere with it so I decided to test all the transistors again including the output ones and that's how I discovered it was open. So the base is here and if we measure to collector and as we can see we've got a, a good junction there and I've turned the beeper off because it's, it, it is kind of annoying. However, if we measure between base and emitter, and if we let the meter range, it's going up in voltage, up in voltage, which is not right, and then goes open. So this transistor isn't functioning correctly. So it's going to have to come back out, which is kind of annoying because it's a brand new transistor, and they're 995 each. So I've gone out this morning and I bought another one, actually a couple. Because I don't remember if I actually filmed it in the last video on this, but the pins on this MJ2955 were all bent, and I straightened them using my, my fingers. I don't know whether it broke the bonding wire internally between base and emitter. Well, yeah, it's unlikely. It could have been open to start with. The amplifier itself wouldn't have done that, because it was all tested on the dim bulb. Uh, and... Honestly, I have never seen a transistor go open between base and emitter. Short, yes, but not, not open. It's very rare. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, because, well, it is possible. But usually transistors short, they don't go open. So, alright. So I'm going to pull this out, and we're going to replace it and try again. So I've got the new transistor out, um, and we'll just test between base and emitter. It is definitely open. Um, if I go between base and collector, we have a junction. So the base to emitter junction is dead. So here's my new transistor. Um, I have already straightened the pins with a pair of pliers this time. And I've tested it before I put it in. And it is functioning on the junctions, but just for the sake of being on camera, let's check base to em emitter. Nice. Got a junction, and between base and collector, nice. And between emitter and collector, 
nothing that way and the other way with polarity nothing so that's a good transistor time to pop him in there and I'm going to use a new brand new micro washer uh, to replace the old one because there was a slight crack in the old one that's been in there for 30 years so I'll put a new micro washer in and um, pop the transistor in after I clean up all this excess goo and re-goo it so there's my new micro washer I've got a syringe of this um, compound stuff because it's less messy and hopefully less watery I don't, ooh, don't need to put too much on because it will spread out ooh. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. right um, fair enough uh, so now I'll just pop this onto the transistor first because it's easier let the compound spread around so you don't need much because that's what it does it just spreads out then I'll make it easier for holding the micro washer on there whilst I get it through the PCB um, it's just the way I like to do it so I've cleaned off the pins as best as I can so I get as little compound coming through the solder joints as possible because that is annoying trying to solder to the compound now I bought this syringe because um, the other stuff that I've got, they, JK used to sell the Unic brand of the compound stuff and it was not as watery, it was nice and thick. This stuff is just like, as soon as you squeeze the tube, all this water pisses out. So, it's not the best stuff to use, that's why I, I don't like it too much. And that's why I ended up buying this um, syringe. Again, I don't need much just liberal amounts here and there that should be plenty and then I can pop the new transistor in which is the printing on this looks really terrible you can't really see it but and it goes that way that way around get in the holes there we go him down see how the printing is a little bit funky on that but we've got working junctions so that's the main thing now on the old transistor there was these isolator bushings that went through where the screws go through so they need to go into where the transistor hole is uh, and there's a second one well there was a second one yeah there it is Excuse my arm. So I can put that one in like so. If I can get it in to go in there, that'd be nice. Uh, added to the fact that I can't see what I'm doing, which doesn't help. I'm just doing it by feel. No, that was completely crooked. When all else fails, here's a pair of pliers. And a screwdriver. Just to uh, promote the thing to go where you want it to go. Hmm. That's not exactly going how I wanted it to go. Alright now I'm going to tighten the nuts, now I've got them all situated. Um, I'm not going to take the MPN out of circuit because it works. Um, I'm not going to mess with it whilst it's working. Uh, uh, I just hope that this fixes said issue because otherwise I'm going to be very annoyed. Okay, that should be tight enough. Clean up the excess goop that came up through the pinholes. The stuff gets everywhere. Um, it's not as bad as when I first used the other stuff. It was like, like just watering on top here. So I might use a bit of ice IPA and a cotton bud to do that. All right, now I just solder the leads in. Um, the actual 
transistor could have failed after I, when I was soldering it too. That is a possibility. Um, it's mm, unlikely to say the least, but it's not impossible. Let's make sure that this is soldering because some of that bloody um, compound is coming up whilst I'm soldering. But it it should be fine. As long as it's got a good electrical connection. Uh, that's all that matters. Right, that should do him. And now just to check that the transistor is still working after I've soldered it in. Base to collector. Yes. Base to emitter. Yes. Emitter to collector. Nothing is going to do that and it will disappear other way around. It's going to do the same thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. Okay, sweet. Alright, it's testing time. So dim bulb time. Turn the dim bulb on, amp on. Okay, that was interesting. Pulsed there for a second. Got about 60 odd millivolts on the output. Ah, f As you can see, it's back together, sitting on the desk here, and I'm now going to call it as non-repairable. Um, the reason why I was swearing so profusely in the last clip is because, well, when I powered it up, I heard a pfft, and my minus 15 volt was all over the place still. It's actually blown the new... MJ2955 up that I put in um, and I'm not going to put any more transistors in it. Now the reason why it's constantly blowing up output transistors and in this case it's now short of that one collector to emitter so there would be DC on the output is because back in the day in the 80s when this thing was built uh, the tr original transistors were Motorola devices and they, they were built a lot differently then than they are now. This amplifier doesn't employ emitter degeneration resistors on the emitters of the output stage, which I've read on forums in particular about modifying this particular amplifier is you have to actually add them if you change the output stage transistors because as I just stated the newer replacement ones these days are built a lot differently than they were back then and back then you could get away without emitter degeneration however I'm not going to do that it is a simple modification you just have to, to break the traces on the underside of the PCB and then solder in a couple of resistors on the underside there and there is just enough room in there to get the uh, resistors in there. You only need something like uh, 0.22 uh, ohm, something like 2 watt devices in there. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because that was not the purpose of this video. It was the purpose of this was to see if it could be repaired. This is not a paid job, by the way. Um, so I, I'm not going to make any money on it. So I've called it. I'm not going to go any further with it. It can be repaired. I don't see any problems with any of the other transistors. Everything else checks out. You know, they're not shorted. We, the drivers are good. The VBE multiplier or bias spreader transistor is good. The input transistors are good, etc. It's just that it does not like the newer um, TO3 style MJ2955 transistor in this case. The 2N. 3055 is fine in this case, but yeah, that's where it's at. So I'm going to leave this alone now. Um, and the, my flatmate actually wants the pot out of it anyway, because he's got a proton amplifier which has a potentiometer in there for the volume control, which is open on one of the gangs on the uh, wiper. So there's no left channel. And it's obviously one of those special pots that has the extra tap or the extra um, wiper, 
which goes to the loudness circuitry. And this, I believe, is a 20k pot, and the one in the Proton is 50k, so it's a, it may sound a little bit and perform a little bit different. But you could cobble that in to that amplifier just fine and get that one working. Um, so I've left that with, with him because it's actually his friend that owns this amplifier. Um, and I think it was just given to him. Someone else bought it from the South Ho uh, the Mornington tip shop for 120 bucks, and then he just ended up with it somehow by swapping something else. I don't know. So that's where it's at. That's where I'm going to leave it. Um, not everything can be repaired. As I said, this probably can be. I'm just not going to invest the time uh, in doing it and modifying it to make it work. You can if you want, if you've got one of these, but yeah, but that's where I'm going to leave it. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to go down below, comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Also go down and like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to leave this one here. This is the Astro 3 saying as always, see ya. Have a great day.